So you're just in time for another eBay unboxing. Here's two items I just made videos of. So if you haven't already subscribed, hit the subscribe and then hit the bell notification, the drop down box, and then hit all. And you'll get all notifications when I unbox uh, these really cool antique objects. All right, so let's go on to the next item and we'll see what we got today. So I ordered so many things. Uh, it's my birthday week. Yes, week. <laughs> I always make sure that every year, right around uh, two weeks before my birthday, I buy as many things as I can on eBay so I don't get yelled at, right? So the husband starts bitching usually, always. Uh, and I get capped. I get told no more. And then, but he can't say anything because my 50th birthday is almost here. So, all right. Now, I forgot what this is. There's so many things I ordered. It's going to be a surprise. Never cut towards yourself. I learned that when I worked in a deli. Yes, the tip of my finger went flying off once. And uh, I was taught, never cut towards yourself or you'll end up in the ER. And uh, getting your fingertips sewn back on. All right, uh, that wasn't fun. All right, so I figured, let me just order as much shiz as I can. And uh, yeah, before, and then once my birthday's over, uh, I'm going to get hell again. All right, so let's see. Oh, this is pretty. I like when they do pretty things like this. All right, something just went ding. Wait a minute. There's more than one item in here. Oh, okay, there's multiple. I Oh, one thing fell out. Oh, okay, I know what this is now. All right, so there's a story to go along with this. All right, so the seller was listing a bunch of perfume bottles. I am a huge perfume bottle collector. And what had happened was, well, she had four perfume bottles in a picture. There was one of them I really wanted. And what happened was, was I said, oh, somebody's going to find it. She said these were like vintage. You know, they weren't old. And I said, oh, one of them is definitely Victorian or at least 1900-ish, right? And I said to her, I'll give you, and I, I, I liked all four of them, but two weren't, weren't as old. And so I said to her, I'll give you. $30 for two of the, and I told her which ones, two of those perfume bottles in your listing, if you do a buy it now. And she wrote me back and said, just bid. And it turns out that I won all four for $32. Apparently, she just didn't do a very good job of marketing. And thankfully, nobody really saw the, the one, the one that I really wanted. And the other one is iffy. The other one might be the best out of all four. All right, so let's get these open. Okay, this is the one that I wanted the most. Okay, so this is a Chatelaine perfume bottle. So you know right off the bat, this is at least Victorian or early 20th century. When I say that, I mean between 1900, 1905 or earlier. All right, I really wanted this one. Okay, so that is the main reason why I offered her 30 bucks for all four. I mean for all two. Uh, the other one was another, it was looking good if you know what I mean. Now I'm supposed to get four. Why is there only one, two, three. I have to check the bag. Hold on. Imagine I got screwed. I, I would I wouldn't blame her for screwing me. Well, oh, please God, please let the other one. Oh, okay, I think they're all in here. Yes, they are. Okay. So these two, I was like, eh. I always wanted to add these to my collection, but I always thought they were very old. It turns out that they're not as old as I always thought they were. They're German. A lot of people think that these are opaline glass that are French. They're not. These are German perfume bottles made of uh, some kind of German glass. And a lot of people think these are antique. These were probably made between the teens up until about the 30s, like right around there. This one is actually very pretty. They usually come with a long stopper inside. And yes, it does. It does have that. And I always wanted to add these to my collection, but they generally go too high. So you put this on your pressure point. They generally go, oh, I can smell the perfume. Wow, wait, hold on. Oh, it's really, wow, it's really pronounced. You can never get rid of the smell of old perfume. Believe it or not, you can wash this bottle out with a bottle brush with Dawn detergent a hundred times. You will never get rid of the smell of perfume. Here's an example. I used to work at a dry cleaner. And even after dry cleaning people's clothes, and I used to have to stuff the sleeves with the tissue paper and put the plastic bags over them and, you know, get them prepared for the customer. And they always, their clothes still stunk of the same perfume that they wore before they washed it. All right, so that's one. That's a nice one. I'm going to clean it up. Uh, the metal on it got really dirty. And... 
this one was the prettier, the, the prettier of the two. And let me just get this uh, wrapping out of the way here. It's distracting. And this one looks like an orange. Aren't you glad? And uh, look at this. So this is German glass. Again, probably the 30s, all the way up even into possibly the 40s. It does say something on it. It says Florida, but these were made in Germany. So this was a tourist piece. Actually quite interesting. Let me smell. Oh, yeah, it smells like the same exact perfume as the other one. And a lady would have carried this around in her purse. I'm not too thrilled about the Florida thing, but, you know, these were made in Germany. All right, so it's like art glass. All right, the next piece was this piece. Now, this needs to be cleaned. I'm going to look for marks. It's probably brass, but I was hoping it's gilded silver. Um, a lot of times these were gilded silver. Now, some jackhammer <laughs> or jackalope or... Uh, 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 some provolone, <laughs> some stupid mook put a price tag sticker on here. How, ugh, how stupid. So I'm going to have to scrub this off and get the sticky, yeah, it's sticky. I'm going to have to get that off. But this is uh, definitely old, all right? So this would have attached to a hook and hung from a lady's waistband or from a chatelaine, which was a clip like, I'll show you the piece, uh, a clip like this. So it would have like a clip like this and the perfume would hang, the uh, bottle would hang from it. And this would clip to a lady's waistband. And these would dangle from their waist. That's why I, I wanted that so bad. And I was like, I did not want to go into a bidding war for that. All right, so this one. This one was something I was very interested in, but she only put one picture for this whole lot. So I couldn't tell what it was. And all right. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. Okay. This is, oh yeah, this is old. Okay, so we got a pocket watch style chain. So this would have been a chatelaine. Now half the chain is broken off. She did not say that in the description. In the description, it was like this. Wait, I'll show you. Okay, it was one picture of this and it was like this. All right, she did not say that it was broken. Why are we out of focus? Okay, she did not say it was broken. So I'm a little pissed right now about this. I could probably fix this. But here we have, it appears, now I'm no history buff, maybe it is Mars. It is the god Mars, okay? Or it could be, hmm, Alexander the Great, or it's some kind of like Greek or Roman god. You could see by the dragon on top of the helmet, this is probably the god of war. And very interesting. Here's the back. Okay, and I was hoping this was silver. So let's look around. Sometimes you can find little marks. You got to look really hard. This is pissing me off though. This, yeah, this is, this is a, to this is total bullshit. Okay. This is absolute and total bullshit. I might be able to attach the dog clip to this side of one of these pieces of chain. Let's see if I could fix this and clean this up. We'll do our research. I'm going to clean this one up to find out if it's silver or gilded uh, silver or if it's some kind of brass and I'll be right back. But this, yeah, this is a, this is bull. This is bull hinky. So I gave it a scratch test. It did not test for silver right over there, but it tested so far for 9k gold. Uh, yeah, it tested. Look at that. So this was about eight minutes ago. It's still there. Okay, so this is this is gold. I looked. I didn't see any marks on it. Now I can go ahead and go up to 10k. Let's try that. Okay, we got 10k. No freaking way. And it dissolves at 14. Okay, so this is 9, this is 10, and 14, yeah, bye-bye. Okay, so this is up to 10K. It could be plated. Who knows? Okay, so here's the side that I didn't clean, and this spot I cleaned. Wow. Okay, wow. Look how filthy the rag is getting. All right, so we have a scattering of perfume bottles that I unboxed today, this one being my score, <laughs> this one being real solid 14 in between 14 and 18 karat gold. This one being brass from the, these are Victorian. These were probably early 20th century, uh, 20th century, and these being older. Okay, so this was a pain in the ass. Let me tell you something, guys. I must have spewed every single expletive in the expletive dictionary. Okay, so they, these two, okay, another thing. Sellers, please, please, but uh, even if you're, if you're, I don't know, selling something at your own garage sale, Please don't put price stickers on things. 
Okay, this item was had a price sticker on it. And let me tell you something. The, the, the glue, the adhesive, an old price sticker, uh, was so bad I could not get it off. I Googled how to get it. I had goo, uh, Gooby gone or Goof gone or whatever the hell you call it. That didn't work. I couldn't find the WD-40. It says to use WD-40. Then it says use acetone, use vinegar, use warm soapy water. Let me tell you something. I went through every one of those things until I finally got that sticky residue off of here. Thank the good Lord. Okay, so this turns out 10 karat gold. These two, um, these two German, beautiful. I cleaned them, by the way, they were filthy dirty. And uh, these probably from the 20s, 30s, and even the 40s. I don't even know much about these, but I do know they're German. And uh, a lot of people think uh, mistake these for Italian art glass, like Murano art glass or Venetian glass. But these are unmistakably German. One being a souvenir piece. The other, I don't know. <laughs> and uh, these, uh, you can find these uh, all over eBay. But they generally sell on eBay, which... The prices are usually 50 to 60% less. They usually sell on eBay between, I notice, between 30 and like 50 bu uh, bucks a piece. Okay? So $32. So far, these, the, one of these pays off this whole lot. Okay, so this turning out 10 carat solid gold. Okay? I am in shock. Look how nice that cleaned up. Look at that. Remember how filthy dirty that was? Okay, it looks like brand spanking new. Cleaned it with Simicrone. Next, this was a holy horror, okay? So we saw that the chain was broken, right? This, again, is like this and like this. It would dangle from a channeling clip and dangle from a lady's waistband. And so these two would do the same thing. So, you know, nine times out of ten, you never find them with the original channeling uh, chip, uh, uh, chip clip. Don't mind me. My brain is uh, going south right now. You never find it. It's like nine out of 10 times. All right. So this one has a finger ring as well. You can actually dangle it from your finger. As you can tell, this is tiny. The Victorians were very tiny people. The chain was broken. Okay. I was sort of pissed about that. And I had to get all my jewelry fixing supplies out. I fixed it. I was able to fix it. Turns out I tested it and this is silver. Okay. So we get in this lot gold and silver for 32 bucks. Not bad. Not bad at all. Now, uh, this is a low grade, uh, silver, like a coin silver, uh, level. We're not talking 925 sterling, but we have the God of War. Now, why is this bottle so small? And in these two examples, this one is a nice big size. These are bigger sizes. And why do we have such a tiny one? Well, I'll tell you something. The older the bottle is, what I'm finding, what I'm finding in, in my research, the older the bottle, the smaller the vessel. Why? Because perfume was not mass produced like we have it today. It was very expensive at one time. So an ounce of perfume was a ton of money. Uh, they did not have synthetics. They didn't have synthetic oils that they do uh, mix with regular flowered oils today. Uh, back then, they did not have the machines to mass produce the perfume at the rate that they would like. So they had to get a lot of rose oil from the Middle East, especially places such as Turkey, like the Ottoman Empire. They got it from Iran, and they would get rose oil, but it was very expensive. So the smaller the vessel, that was at a time before... They started to really mass produce, figure out ways to find machines that could mass produce perfume. The French actually came up with these special machines somewhere around, I think around the 1870s. You'll notice the bottles are getting bigger and bigger uh, because the French, uh, it was a whole process. They had to boil like the, uh, the flower petals in these big giant glass like beakers. And then the steam that would set off, it would go into another bottle and the steam would drip, like one drop at a time, uh, would go into a bottle. So picture a beaker. Do you know how many flower petals that would have taken just to make one kind of scented oil? That's why the vessels were smaller. Perfume was more money. Now towards the 1870s, 1880s, the French perfected a machine that could put out like triple the amount of oil uh, without having to get it from the Middle East which was a small fortune to get it from the Middle East as it was. So as time goes on, the Industrial Revolution gets better and better. More machines, better machines, faster machines, quicker machines were invented. 
and then the bottles will get bigger and bigger and bigger over time because perfume could be more affordable at the time. So what we got here is the God of War. So let's uh, zoom in on him. This is unmistakably Mer uh, Mars. I was going to say Mercury. I did look up uh, Mer uh, Mars, the God of War, and he did have a dragon on top of his helmet. So I'm guessing that this is uh, probably, believe it or not, this one is probably going to be, my guess, going to be older than all these ones, especially since it's smaller. This is probably going to be 1850s, 1860s, right around uh, that time frame. Very, very beautiful. This was most likely a grand tour piece, a piece brought back from Europe. So, for example, people would take a trip of the grand tour of Europe. It was a rite of passage for the youth of the time frame during the Victorian and earlier ages. And so wealthier families would send their daughter or son over to Europe. To, they would uh, go on a grand tour. Women or girls especially would have to be chaperoned. You could not go alone as a woman, of course. And so they would take a grand tour of Europe to look over the art and the architecture and uh, learn about paintings and learn about culture and ethnicities. And so this was most likely purchased somewhere, I'm guessing, in Italy, maybe Rome, where they, uh, you know, of course, Rome and Italy, we had the gods, right? We had, uh, they had uh, lots of um, interesting gods. And so this was probably a tourist piece brought over from Europe uh, on the Grand Tour. And, it's, and it was a souvenir. And look how tiny this little bottle is. I mean, you can see next to my fingernail, this is tiny. It has a little screw off cap and it would have held the scented oil or some kind of salt, smelling salts in it. This one is, I don't know which one I like better. Well, this, you know, now I know it has a repair. You really can't tell, but I know it's there, so it pisses me off. Uh, the seller did not disclose that. And the seller did not disclose that this had a big, giant, a, a rectangular uh, splotch of adhesive from an old price sticker stuck on it. And I tell, when I tell you I spent a good hour Getting that price sticker off, it pissed me off. Yes, I have low frustration tolerance. And here we go. So look at this, okay? Look how beautiful and shiny that is. So we got, we struck gold once again. We struck gold with this guy over here. And now we struck uh, gold once again. And uh, silver, this time gold and silver. $32 for the lot. What would this sell for? I don't know. It's only 10 carat though. It's not 14K. I would go with now that we know that that that, that, uh, that this is gold, um, and it's a uh, probably about eighteen eighties, eighteen nineties Chatelaine perfume bottle with the original chain and fingering. I would probably sell this if I was on Ruby Lane or a better website than eBay. eBay one hundred one fifty, but on Ruby Lane, First Dibs or Etsy, something like this about two hundred to three hundred and fifty dollars. Possibly more on a good day. Now, the God of War, even though he has a repair, he's a very interesting uh, fellow. He's interesting. Now, he's uh, he's got the same impression on both sides. Let's flip it over. So, on the other side, you've got the God of War also, which is almost... Now, this is a dual collectible. So, if you're a ca an antique cameo collector, you would love to add this to your collection. Because people that collect cameos love these old gods anything with gods on them from the Victorian era. So I would go about 175 to, now if on a better website, we're not talking eBay. On eBay, 70 bucks the most, okay? But if it was on first dibs, I call it first fibs, by the way. If it was on first dibs or if it was on, say, Ruby Lane, uh, probably about 200 to $250 because of the interesting a uh, tidbit that that it's probably a, a grand tour piece uh, brought back and it's very old. These two on a better website, about 75 to about $80 a piece. Not bad, not bad at all. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys all soon. And uh, this was a really great unboxing. These two were really great unboxings too. So go check out those. I'll, if, if it's not already up on my channel, I'll be uploading them shortly for you guys to watch. All right. So I'm so happy. Once again, struck gold. 
And this time we also struck silver. Now, isn't it funny though? The seller got greedy. And when I offered 30 for two pieces, she should have took it because think about it. She didn't list them correctly. She should have took the $30 for the two pieces. And then she could have just relisted these and, and probably got another $30 for them because, you know, she wasn't actually listing these correctly. And so she could have made 60 bucks, but instead, nope, she got greedy and she got punished for being greedy because I got all four pieces for 32 bucks. Turns out real gold, turns out real silver. And I won. It was a win. And I know a lot of eBay resellers get really pissed at my videos. They they get really angry. They see like, uh, you know, they think I'm taking advantage. I'm really not. It's hunches. I don't know what I'm going to get when I see their shitty pictures and their shitty, um, terrible description. You know, it's I take chances on things, but I get feelings. And a lot of people give me uh, down votes on these type of videos. I don't know why. Why would you give someone a down vote for being, you know, lucky and taking an educated guess and uh, getting a score? Uh, I don't understand. I don't win all the time. Trust me. It would take me usually about a week to find one lot like this on eBay. Everybody knows what everything is nowadays. Uh, this piece took me a good week to find of hard work. It took me, I mean, I'm not kidding you, thousands and like uh, tens of thousands of listings just to find this one. And this one on Etsy was a very hard find as well. So don't give me a, a down vote because I got lucky. It's it's not like I'm bragging or anything. I'm just sharing my uh, collection with you guys and how once in a while you can get lucky. You can strike gold. You can, yeah, strike gold. You can strike silver. And uh, it's, it's a fun game. It's a fun game to try to find treasures and uh, find sellers that really don't know what they have. Because in today's day and age with the technology that we have, it's very easy to quickly find out what you have and its value. And uh, it's getting harder and harder to find these scores or sleepers. All right, guys, I'll see you all soon. We're going to go on to the next unboxing next.